on an all-new Baywatch. Hi, sweetheart. Mom! Look who's popping in on CJ. So, that's Mom. Yep. Fasten your seatbelt. But this visit is no vacation. Vinny! Because when she reveals her past... I got involved with Mr. Wrong. They both could be history. Take care of Shelly and her daughter. Make it look like an accident. Connie Stevens guest stars. Mom! On an all-new Baywatch. Okay, fantastic. Um, I will try my best not to uh, hot dog and grandstand. That's a lie. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try my best to be good. That ain't gonna happen. Oh, I'm excited. I'm excited for this. Thank you guys for doing this with us. Oh my god. Last time I had so much fun and it's actually one of my favorite shows. Really? It. It, oh, it, man. It, it's, it's fucking great. Oh, it's so great to hear. Yeah. Oh, I, th I thought it was great. I had a great time with you guys. And I've actually got loads of people telling me Dude, like we never heard of you guys until you went on this show, and now we're fans of both shows. It's amazing. Aw, yeah. that's great. So yeah, it's really, I'm really sure cool. I'm sure you guys got us more fans than than the <laughs> other way around. But that's awesome. All right, well, you guys ready to get started? Yeah, let's ready do it. The rock. All right. everyone welcome back to a very special bay watching i'm really excited i got some special guests with me this evening uh first of all phelan hi i'm not that special oh, okay <laughs> not so <laughs> special guest phelan you excited to talk about Baywatch? i sure am well me too and i'm very excited about our other special guests this evening once again hot dog and grandstanding the boys from osw review Woo! Yeah! i thought we'd be better we'd be better about that well hello it's your boys your cartoon pals your favorite <laughs> irish boys from osw back for round two in the pool with allison and phelan it's the sizzling steak g hunter and v1 was the crack oh, man, <laughs> my main thing here is like I'm not the main host, so it's got. It's like I can faff around as much as I want. Like if I wanted to be like a, a bumpkin, if I wanted to be Jim Bob Roberts, I could just go right down. Who'd not a hold down? Who'd not a hold down? Yeah, <laughs> you'll have to edit it. He's like, yes! It's fantastic. You guys always bring the energy, you know. It's all the coke and steroids from the '80s. <laughs> I go pro. Yes. They balance out my lack of energy. <laughs> it's all yin and yang, you know. <laughs> Oh man, did you watch the Amazon rip? The, the um, did you pay for <laughs> Amazon Prime? <laughs> That's in sparkling 1080p widescreen. I did. It's gorgeous. Oh man, yeah, because I gave that a watch, and then I watched the German DVD rip for funsies. State of your washed out four to three full screen low bit rate bollocks. <laughs> That was how it was, though. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's the version we watched. Although, oh, yes. I don't think there was much of a difference between the two outside of the image quality, because this episode is very strange. I don't think there was a single montage in it. That's right. Not a single music replacement. Yeah, even wow. Hogan had a montage. <laughs> yeah. Question, why is this called Guess Who's Coming to Dinner? I think it's a reference to something. There's a, a movie called that, I think. Oh, from 1967. The rom-com with Sidney Poitier, Catherine Hepburn. Because I thought there might be something more clever here, but like, if it's a reference <laughs> to a film about interracial marriage, there's a black guy and a white woman, the parents of both don't <laughs> yeah. know their child is dating someone of a different race, and the dads of both don't approve, mostly because they'll get a lot of abuse about it. Since yeah. it's 1967, uh, interracial uh -huh. marriage still illegal in 17 states until six months before the film's release. Uh, Baywatch! <laughs> <laughs> Last time, cancer. This time, interracial marriage. <laughs> This has nothing to do yeah. with anything. In this episode. <laughs> you know what? There are black characters on the show, not in this episode. They're they're off yeah. somewhere in another dimension. <laughs> this is the point where Tracy Bingham is a main character, right? And she's not in this episode at all. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> she's off waiting for her singular plot about how her mom is white. <laughs> <laughs> This is a very strange episode around this point in time because there's no B plot whatsoever. It's all just one singular plot, which is strange for Baywatch. And it's also about Pamela Anderson, which most plots, most episodes did not focus on her. She had very little episodes that were actually just about her character. Oh. What else could a man ask for? 
Do you guys have uh, any sort of uh, backstory about uh, it, Shawn Michaels around the time or any sort of wrestling stuff uh, that uh, might be important to know? Ooh, Steve, give me a quickie recap of Pam in WWF in 95. Can you just say that? Uh, quickie recap of Pam in WWF in 95. Oh, can I have a quickie recap of Pam in the WWF in 1995? Well, thank you for asking, sir. <laughs> 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 WWF managed to get Pamela Anderson showing up at the Rumble as a special guest where all the locker room horn on her. They're like the hey baby. It's great. Yeah, it's pretty yeah, good. Yeah, Jimmy Del Rey <laughs> yeah. just perving on her like a massive creep. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, HBK wins the Rumble and for her to escort him to the ring at WrestleMania. She ends up not honouring it and valets opponent Diesel instead. But we still got some cool B-roll out of it, like the two doing a backstage promo together where he's kind of... Oh, and she's like, oh, come on, mate. And uh, when he's <laughs> celebrating at the Rumble and doing his poses, like Pam has to get in the ring and kind of stand there and go, oh, oh just, just true grit of tea. <laughs> Wave at the people. <laughs> Blow them. <up, kiss> <laughs> um, so that was for Rumble to WrestleMania 11 in early 95. After that, they wanted to continue working together with the WWF, i.e. Uh, Baywatch WWF crossover episode. But WWF were offered no money, but Vince wanted some money. <laughs> Uh, so they went with Freebie WCW instead. And yeah, this was aired November 96. I was trying to figure out when did Sean film this? Like, when did he take time out? Uh, November 95, he had a kayfabe concussion wrestling Owen. And he does a retirement angle. He's off for two months, returns it to Rumble. Yeah. Or he had a few weeks off in early April 96. And he was back in time for In Your House 7. So did he take two months to film his podcast? <laughs> yes, that's, that's exactly, you know, uh, I was thinking like, surely he could have done his part in this in, you know, like a day or two. Listen, um, I've seen him walk, Steve. He, he, he <laughs> just do that, you know, 12 takes. That's him very looking true. Around, totally. That's very true. Surprisingly, I did check his autobiography. So what, you know, what did you say about Pam and Baywatch? He has two autobiographies. They're not neither. Just glosses over mm-hmm. it completely. Not wow. even noteworthy. This is his uh, acting debut. It's Nothing about down. his acting debut? On what was like the biggest show in the entire world at the time. Mm. I think. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. It was the most watched show in the world. It was huge. Yeah, like everybody watched it. Uh, everyone oogled it, Steve. <laughs> yeah, oogled it. That's very true. <laughs> when Sean filmed this, would he have still been trying to do that? I don't think so, catchphrase. Oh. Already dropped that already. That uh, sounds pretty easy, doesn't it? I don't think so. We're talking about an eight-foot steel ladder. Oh, well, it would have been like three years into I don't think so. So I think he's still <laughs> trying to just get a... Uh, <laughs> I don't think so. Unlike the last time that we recorded, uh, I have actually watched quite a bit more wrestling, uh, but none of it is around this era that <laughs> Shawn Michaels would have been active. It was more around yeah. the time when he was a commissioner. I was seeing some stuff. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Commissioner Sean. Um, you know, I, I did hear about the uh, the Royal Rumble thing. Um, the reason Pamela Anderson didn't escort Shawn Michaels was because Tommy Lee had some sort of issue, like altercation with him backstage. Oh, that's right. Uh-huh. Yeah. They were like yeah. originally going to, she was going to escort him and then ended up not doing that because of that. They were fighting over who could do the most amount of drugs. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> Apparently she was quite nice. And then like whenever Tommy was around, she was, uh, turned it quite yeah. sour. Oh, okay. Yeah. I thought Tommy Lee was so supportive according to that new Pam and Tommy series. <laughs> I still haven't seen it. As far as we haven't finished it yet, I don't think they're going to go into the Shawn Michaels episode of Baywatch. <laughs> That'd be amazing. That'd be so funny. They had like a fake Shawn Michaels. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be brilliant. I would love that. <laughs> All right. You guys ready to jump into this episode? Ready to rock. Yeah, we're going to do it. All right. The opening of Guess Who's Coming to Dinner. There is a rescue that's being set up. There are some dumb kids playing on some rocks. This is uh, very close to uh, Bash at the Beach. Also had dumb kids on some rocks. (laughs) One of the boys wanders into a bad cave set. (laughs) This cave set they used quite a bit. It never looked good. It doesn't look good in HD either. Rubbery (laughs) rocks never look good. So we see Cody watching the water, uh, and the weather looks like Silent Hill. Oh, no. It's creepy. We see Cody strolling out after the kids are in danger. (laughs) (laughs) CJ wanders over in her bathing suit and Ugg boots. It tells him all about this romantic evening that she has planned for them. 
She says, I'm going to make all your wishes come true. (laughs) (laughs) She's foreshadowing Michael's, you know, with his crossed arms, trying to be a genie later. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, she's foreshadowing when she sang that genie in a bottle song in Vegas. I don't know this, and now I can't wait yeah, to please, see it. Please, oh, please, yeah, yeah, we, 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 we absolutely need to. <laughs> Pamela see this. Anderson, genie in a bottle. <laughs> wow. Amazing. Seeing a person wearing Ugg boots in 1996, as a person from Ireland, they didn't become popular until about six years later (laughs) (laughs) so i I was like oh my god people were wearing these in the 90s it was amazing to see yeah it was really it was really big then um but it always looks stupid to me like the ugg boots with the bathing suit her um suit seems to barely even fit anymore like it (laughs) seems like from the last time that we watched baywatch her boobs have grown like multiple <laughs> sizes uh, she, she might have gone up a bit <laughs> yeah definitely do because her her bathing suit is uh working very hard to keep everything in you know oh man yeah when she rescues that kid and she's like leaning in toward the camera like full shot of just this cleavage like, <laughs> it looks ridiculous at this point <laughs> and now you know the secret of a billion viewers <laughs> yeah. yeah oh yeah yeah your man your man cody the gorgeous dude bro he was like my appetite is voracious <laughs> Bollocks, you use that word in everyday speech. No. Let's just say my appetite is voracious. Like, Cody knows what voracious means. I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> the little boy in the cave is trapped by some waves, so his brother runs over to ask Cody and CJ for help. Cody jumps in to save the day while Pamela waits dryly on shore. <laughs> she can't jump in. <laughs> but she shows her butt to the camera. Five stars. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, as a parent, seeing these three children out on this dangerous rocky shore with the waves crashing, going into caves, I was so angry. I was like, where are your parents' children? <laughs> <laughs> they knew was there like, was a lifeguard on. watching. They're like, yeah, they'll be fine. <laughs> yeah. Well, they aren't even watching, though, are they? They were, like, closing up the tower, weren't they? Oh, yeah, they were closing up. They were getting ready to head on out and leave those kids to drown. <laughs> Anyway, Vegas. <laughs> so we get a shot of Deborah Schwartz winning big at the casino. Uh, do you guys remember Deborah Schwartz and Bash at the Beach? Which one's that? She was the mom who was uh, not believing her son when he said that he saw Hulk Hogan running by. I was like, can it? <laughs> <laughs> I think she was also a producer, but she was married to one of the producers. So she just shows up randomly in tons of episodes, just Uh, as extras mm. a lot. Um, When they cut to the casino at the start, Mm -hmm. is it roulette? Yeah. As soon as the ball goes in, they go, yeah, and celebrate. It's like, that ball hasn't stopped. (laughs) (laughs) How dare you? I was just excited they were able to do it. They're like, yeah, (laughs) Yeah. look at it go. Yeah, gambling in general. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, this is going full on, like, play the Vegas music over the establishing shots. Like, da-da-da-da, in the Vegas. (laughs) (laughs) Um, man, the music in this episode. Oh the my music. god! Yeah. Holy shit! <laughs> I'm convinced CJ's mom is the funniest thing ever. It's just that kind of '90s cheesy stock music. You know, like that free stuff you get on YouTube at the library. It yeah. was so bad. It was so cheesy. Like it was at odds with the tension of the show. You know, like you're you're literally telling us that this mobster is going to, you know, maybe take someone's life. And then the music in the background is like, bah, 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 bah. <laughs> <laughs> it just makes no sense. They keep trying to tell us it's a comedy episode, and yet what is happening that's funny at any point? Oh, she steals incriminating evidence. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. While they're, uh, everyone's gambling, uh, we pan over to mobster Tony Blanton and his number one guy, Vinny, played by Shawn Michaels in a vest with no shirt. Oh, he's just a bouncer, man. <laughs> oh, a uh, HBK in a dark brown felt cow hide waistcoat. It certainly looks like something like that. Yeah. And then Baywatch is like, hey, Sean, you act, but hold your hands together at all times. <laughs> <laughs> Try act your way to this one. If you look very closely, you can see Sean losing his smile as he's standing there. <laughs> <laughs> I've lost a lot of things and one of them has been my smile. 
and I have to go back and I have to find my smile because somewhere along the line, I lost it. We get our first glimpses of his acting. Bad. <laughs> <laughs> he has so few lines and yet he makes the, the least out of them. <laughs> has anyone ever told you that you talk too much? Tony's girlfriend, uh, Shelly Sands, shows up. He insists on her throwing the die for him as his good luck charm, but she loses him a lot of money and he gets very angry very quickly. And a helpful unnamed waitress steps over to warn Shelly about Tony's other girlfriends who disappeared when they became bad luck and then wanders out. Her job is done. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Miss Sands, Mr. Blanton will be up soon. So do yourself a favor, stay put and don't get in any more trouble. Vinny escorts Shelly to the hotel room and there's weird pauses in his dialogue. There's very strange choices made by uh, by Shawn Michaels here. I wonder how many takes they gave him, like where they dare all day and they're just like, say the fucking line. Come on, <laughs> Dougal, just <laughs> say the fucking line, Dougal. And they just try it over and over again. And this is the best out of two dozen takes. And they're like, okay, Sean, this like, you know, 15 seconds of runtime has cost us 250 grand, mate. Uh, you know, like we can't give you any more time. You know, we're just going to go with this. I like the bit where uh, he opens the door to the hotel room and then she like kicks him in the butt on the way in. <laughs> You're like world heavyweight champion selling for this oh. helpless <laughs> elderly lady. You know what? Fair play to him. He sold the hell out of it. Oh my God. Like surely Vince would have been told that Sean was going to have to sell for, you know, Pamela Anderson's mom. And <laughs> Mamela Anderson. Like, Mamela Anderson. And he, <laughs> he should never have let this happen. He should, you know, like for God's sake, it's my world champion. <laughs> <laughs> That's just the power of Sean's acting, pal. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so he leaves her alone in the hotel room. Uh, she finds a hidden floppy disk that contains information on Tony's unreported casino winnings. It's unclear why he has this. They never explain why he's kept a record of these winnings like that he hasn't reported. Like, Why would you do this? Was the show trying to get across that this is the key to his money? Or is it just a ledger of money that he's won? Yeah, like incriminating yeah, evidence. Think, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think it's just text file of like my illegal wins. <laughs> 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 yeah, like, isn't yeah. the point that you don't keep a record of it? Like, I, I never understood at all what was happening. Yeah. So she runs away and then the mob guy comes in, looks for her, sees that the disc is missing and then, okay, she's got it. Let's go after her. And I was like... If she had just closed, you know, the holder, put the holder back in its place. You never would have seen it. Yeah, it'd be grand. And yeah. if I, I was like, I always think, because I love horror films and I usually put myself in the position, what would you do? If she turned the shower on and then ran away, she probably would have got herself like 15 minutes head start. Ooh. Yeah. Good you. Well, she's not really that bright. So <laughs> I think that's why she didn't do any of that. I do like when Tony calls Shawn Michaels in, like he has trouble with the door, so they have to like cut. <laughs> Uh, so CJ and Cody are making out, and there's a knock on the door, and Shelly shows up, and that's when they reveal that she's CJ's mom. CJ finds her visit suspicious because her mom is scared of earthquakes and said she'd never come back to California. Plus, she's acting super weird and obvious, so <laughs> seems like something's going on. I like she asks Cody to tell me more about yourself, and he says, I'd love to, and then has nothing else. <laughs> <laughs> he knows all there is to know <laughs> uh, so as people who watch this show has cj's mom ever been on the show before or is this like a <laughs> no, brand new character absolutely not and never okay. will again <laughs> this is the first time since uh cj was introduced in season three and we're on season seven now that they acknowledge that she grew up in vegas <laughs> <laughs> any of this backstory we meet any of her family i love it okay. so we can assume her mom got killed by the mob yeah the mobster definitely like killed her after this episode <laughs> <so. laughs> <laughs> caroline's gone for the weekend yasmin bleeth uh, lives with them normally but they've written her out of the episode uh so they offer to let cj's mom stay in her room i'd feel really creepy if my roommates let someone else stay in my room while i was gone that is quite weird. You know, you would think that CJ would offer her her bed and then maybe she could sleep on the couch. Yeah. yeah. Very weird. Like, <laughs> I let my mom sleep in your room. What? <laughs> 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 
All right. Well, anyway, uh, <laughs> in the locker room, CJ says that this is where they get changed for work, but she's already in her bathing suit. So she <laughs> changed before they got there. They see one of the dudes showering naked uh, off screen. That's not lifeguard protocol. Cody got in trouble for that in a previous episode. Inconsistent. He got in trouble for having a shower. For showering naked. You're supposed to keep your bathing suit on. Ah. Oh. Oh, they're never nudes. Bathroom. Oh, okay. <laughs> they're never nudes, yeah. <laughs> CJ says, well, this is where a lot of lifeguards are trapped during that earthquake, which is a nice thing to tell her mom who's deathly afraid of earthquakes. The wrestler or <laughs> the natural uh, disaster? Pr- presumably both. <laughs> the wrestler showed up and everyone was cowering oh, in fear man. in the locker room. I'd be so into that. <laughs> <laughs> I'd even take Dungeon of Doom earthquake. Oh, yeah. I'd yeah. even. Shark. Yeah. He's amazing. <gasps> shark! <laughs> Why wasn't he on Baywatch? He could have played two <laughs> characters on one episode. <laughs> could have played Earthquake and Shark. <laughs> yeah, he's like, he's got split personalities, so he kind of goes between both of them. He'll start like gumming her arm. He'll just bite her. <laughs> <laughs> uh, her mom stays behind, hides the floppy disk in CJ's locker. That's a great thing to do to your daughter. Hide yeah. the incriminating monster <laughs> evidence. <laughs> that way there. they'll kill her. <laughs> Then we get Shelly relaxing on the beach. Uh, overwhelming music plays. Mitch approaches so Shelly can stroke David Hasselhoff's ego. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't tell me you had all these handsome men working with you. I think that's like one of Hasselhoff's demands. Like, I must be like praised every once in a while. The male ego is a disease. This is so weird. Um, just to place it in context for you guys, the last time we saw um, Mitch's character was on an episode of Baywatch Nights X-Files edition where he was fighting a serial killer ghost in a cabin. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> That's a, quite the sentence. He's like, well, now that I'm off from that, hey, what's up, CJ's mom? A serial killer ghost. Yeah. In a cabin. In a cabin. In a, in a brothel cabin time oh, no, travel no, we're thing. Oh, no, no. Lawsuits flying. (laughs) It may have all been a dream, though, so I guess it's okay. It's incredible. She got like a a big uh, Terminator vibe from Shawn Michaels when he was walking down the beach. Definitely. He's a big. Oh, yeah, yeah. This is when he shows up. He's got a suit jacket and some binoculars. (laughs) He smiles sneakily. Doesn't even go on to the beach, but just takes out and starts to look at all of the women on a beach. Like, you know, <laughs> surely there are laws against this. Did he leave somewhere. his French coat in the car? <laughs> yeah. yeah. This is where that gif comes from, where people have seen him, like, holding the binoculars and, like, putting on a pair of shades. So now people know the origin. I don't think so. We're talking about an eight-foot steel ladder! So, yeah, um, he's like, I, I have too many sleeves on. I just have too much sleeves. I have to get undressed and go undercover as a beachgoer. A little boy is once again drowning, so the lifeguards head to the rescue uh, while Shelly is watching. Shawn Michaels walks awkwardly over to grab her. I swear, like a timpani drum plays. (laughs) 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 Anymore! And she asks how he knew where she was, and he's like, well, you're always bragging about your daughter, the lifeguard, but that doesn't answer the question. Yeah. There could be a lifeguard anywhere. Like... (laughs) This, this is all the explanation you're getting. Yeah. And that you got it is, is impressive. Binoculars were amazing. <laughs> <laughs> More awkward walking ensues, and CJ and Mitch abandon the small drowned child <laughs> to go help her. CJ yells, and uh, Shawn Michaels is taken down by Shelly. Oh, this hurts. He is swept off his feet. He's bested by an <laughs> old lady. He's sent packing, scurrying yeah. away. The biggest Shawn Michaels sell job. (laughs) (laughs) Shawn at the best of times is known for having a massive ego Mm -hmm. and he never liked to make other people look good. Like it must have (laughs) eaten him up inside (laughs) to put this lady over. It must have killed just a little piece of him. Yeah. Or he was scared of her. She was beating him up behind the scenes. (laughs) (laughs) Pulled out a tuft of his hair. (laughs) (laughs) That's how he lost his smile. That's it. Mitch offers to go after him, uh, but Shelly makes up some story about them fighting over a hundred dollar bill. So everything's okay. Oh, well, I reckon that was the scene where they're like, you're not coming back. Jesus. (laughs) It was like 40 seconds of her doing her shtick. And oh my God. (laughs) Sometimes it got a little overwhelming. Sometimes we needed to see a little less of CJ's mom. Yeah. She keeps making like noises through the episode. Like, oh, 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 oh. 
That's disturbingly accurate. The next scene, CJ is tapping her nails in Mitch and Stephanie's office. It's not explained why she's there other than the need to move the story forward. This is weird. CJ doesn't go into Mitch and Stephanie's office. She's not a lieutenant. There's no reason for her to be hanging out at Stephanie's desk. She hardly ever has extended scenes with Mitch anymore, so that's weird. Yeah. Question, why... Okay, Pam is off the clock in this part of the episode. How come she's still in her revealing lifeguard tights? Oh, you know why. (laughs) But Mitch gets to be in a polo shirt and shorts. (laughs) She didn't go back to change. She just wanted oh, to keep okay. it's weird. It's yeah. the that outfit on, I guess. <laughs> the boots make her look more naked because they signify. It does. They yeah. signify she's done getting dressed. Like. You know what she needed? <laughs> yeah. Knee pads and elbow pads uh, would have yeah, yeah. filled yeah. in all of the Steve. blanks. There you go. She'd have been ready to work, <laughs> ready to bump, and it would have looked great. <laughs> Is this where she shits on Cody for no reason? Yeah, yeah. She says, um, I feel like I have two children and they're my mom and my boyfriend, something like that. Cody's displayed unusual competency in this episode, (laughs) so I don't know why she's bitching about him. I think it's really foreshadowing her leaving him after he proposes to her. No. Oh, wow. Spoiler alert. I know. (laughs) That's how the Pamela Anderson's last episode ends. Yeah. Cody proposes to her, she's thinking, and then she never to shows be continued up again. the next episode. I guess the answer was no. She's gone. <laughs> <laughs> Devastation. That just kills his character as well. That's horrible. Poor guy. Yeah. Uh, he gets over it. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's more fish in the sea. <laughs> Shelly uh, arrives to tell uh, her and Mitch about this big dinner they're all going to have. Apparently this double date's going to happen. And uh, Tony ends up calling the office for her. I don't know how he knows that she's in the office at that time. <laughs> what the plan is, just get her on the phone and say, hey, give me that disc. We got Sean's uh, binoculars, binoculars. You can see her. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she hangs up. CJ kicks Mitch out of his own office to talk to her. <laughs> Shelly sits down next to a folder labeled helicopters. <laughs> what? <laughs> CJ orders her to tell her all the details or she'll break her legs. <laughs> what the fuck? She's just With comedy music, it's grand. <laughs> <laughs> She's just threatened to, to do something that might be worse than what the mob boss would have done. <laughs> I love the way that Pamela Anderson says the line, like, or I'll break your legs. (laughs) Her mom has kind of earned that at this point. (laughs) I think we'd all kind of like to see CJ breaking her mom's legs. (laughs) CJ puts on her finest mini dress so they can confront Tony at the (laughs) Ritz-Carlton. She's like, I'm going to dress up for the mobster confrontation. Nice. <laughs> Did you like her in the baby blue outfit, just like Rip at a no-holes bird? Yes. Yeah. yeah, I did. I most certainly did. <laughs> That's exactly what she was going Shock for. I know it. Yeah. Yeah. It was a little looser than Rip's outfit, though. <laughs> <laughs> uh, apparently, she just wants to beat up the murderous mobster. Like, that seems to be her plan. Solid. Just to go in there and threaten him. I mean, you know, she can break her mom's legs, she can break Tony's legs, she can break Vinny's legs. Don't break Sean's legs. Come on, man. <laughs> this is where uh, Sean Michaels is standing with his folded arms, like, the whole time, like a genie. Like, yeah. I <laughs> think he wishes he could have got the job Bret Hart did as the genie <laughs> in that Aladdin play. <laughs> God, I'm, I'm so sad they don't trust Sean to be anything more than like a stern, stiff bodyguard goon. Like, mm-hmm. you, different things, you forget HBK, he's actually a big, muscly guy. Because in the real, oh, I was going to say real world, I said not real, in the wrestling world, uh, he's one of the smallest. Like, there are some light heavyweights that are bigger than, like Brian Christopher or something, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. But in Baywatch, he's really big. He's a big, scary, oh, muscly yeah. dude who gets nothing to put him over as a big, scary, muscly dude. Who gets battered and sent back in the old ladies. <laughs> Shelly and CJ, they basically just say that they know everything. So don't threaten us or attack CJ or anything. <laughs> don't kill us. Uh, by the way, Tony looks like Javier Bardem from No Country for Old Men. Ringer for him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was just waiting for him to pull out the, the like, gas canister. <laughs> <laughs> See you, CJ. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, yeah, the, he's played by David Groh, who uh, played mobsters a lot. You'll be unsurprised to find out. Um, he also had a recurring role on VIP with Pamela Anderson. Mm. Ah, commiseration. <laughs> <laughs> he, he was a good-hearted mobster in that show, and that show mobster the mobsters the are just kind of, of sort of scamps. Yeah. He was related to one of the other main cast members, right? He's her uncle, I think. I think he was her dad. Or is he her dad? He might have been her dad. (laughs) Some sort of relation anyway. So fun fun family mobster. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, So CJ throws her drink uh, or a drink on Tony and they leave. And uh, Shawn Michaels says she seems to know about the others after they explicitly told them they knew about the others. (laughs) This is a clever fellow, this Shawn. We need need to tell Rose E here. (laughs) He misses nothing, does he? (laughs) And I don't intend to end up like the others. She seems to know about the others. Cut to double date with CJ, Cody, Mitch, and CJ's mom (laughs) as they dance. (laughs) Can I ask you, like, dancing in the gaff, how does the Hoff feel about being paired with the mom and not CJ? Well, I believe David Hasselhoff had a complicated relationship with Pamela Anderson. Yeah. I don't think he liked her, to be honest. There were no. some interviews and stuff where he, he just didn't like the image she brought to the show. There's some barely held back clear disdain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cowboys are so mean to me, man. They're not mean to me, but they're just like, I don't know, why? What did I do wrong? Catherine Hepburn once said, I don't care what they print about me as long as it's not the truth. <laughs> really? Well, then they got it covered. He had uh, an issue with the whole Playboy uh, sexy image of the show. He was very much in denial about what Baywatch was. So he kept fighting for it to be this family show. And then she was, of course, the face of uh, the, what Baywatch really was. So oh, I um, don't think her face was the important thing in, ba- in Baywatch. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <For> <laughs> <sure>. Baywatch <laughs> is about me and my gray chest. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. He was jealous of her uh, assets, so... When you think of Baywatch, it's Pamela Anderson and it's David Hasselhoff. So a lot of people would be like, oh, you guys slept together. Oh, the characters should get together or whatever. And I feel like he just fought against it tooth and nail. Like he's like, no, these characters will never get together. (laughs) So they had like maybe one or two flirtatious kind of things. At one point, she says she had a forbidden fruit thing for him. Yeah. (laughs) What? Yeah, but now he could be potentially her new mom, so that's creepy. <laughs> her new <laughs> mom. He could be her new mom, too. That would, that's Baywatch Nights. <laughs> yeah. They did try oh, to yeah. trick us in the movie to think they might get married for two seconds. Oh, yeah. Well. <laughs> and he's like, no, <laughs> spit on her. <laughs> it it kind of seemed like Pamela Anderson didn't really have much of an issue with him. But um, they, they've kept like a, an okay public image together. Like I think she was at his roast, so that was pretty funny. It's hilarious. Okay, that is fascinating. I know exactly what you're going through. Except when they roasted me, I was relevant. (laughs) Anyway, okay, so uh, at this double date, they dance together, uh, and then the boys lift the girls, and Pamela Anderson awkwardly tries to avoid a panty shot. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, yeah. (laughs) She really, really tries, which is weird, because... For most of the show, she's got her tiny little red bathing suit on where you can basically see everything. So why does she care about you seeing her purple jocks? I feel like a crotch shot in she was probably wearing a thong probably was a little more than they (laughs) would want to show. Also, it seemed like Baywatch had this thing. This changed later. But at this point, uh, underwear versus bathing suit. Totally Ah. different thing. They never showed women in their underwear. It was just bathing suits or bikinis. That's that so weird. Very small, but... Bathing suits, yeah. you're showing the world underwear is not. Okay. And so yeah. it's a privacy thing, maybe? Okay. I don't know. It might be just, like, they just didn't want a crotch shot either, so... But, like, all... Alt- Hassel- <laughs> Hasselhoff's waiting. Waiting <laughs> to take you down. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, you could always say, I was worried that my panties were going to show in a scene, so, you know, I was kind of holding down my dress. Uh, it doesn't look good on camera. Can we just do this 30-second clip once again, please? No, we're too busy refilming Sean. <laughs> yeah. and he took up all their time. Used up all their real. <laughs> CJ and her mom have a touching dishwashing scene. <laughs> CJ says something about like, "Well, as long as we have the disc, we're fine." Mitch wanders in like a big oaf. <laughs> He thinks they said something about disco, and that, like, fools him. This man's a P.I. at this point. 
Oh, did you say disco? Okay. <laughs> the next day, CJ is back in her Ugg boots and uh, shutting down her tower. She and her mom are getting ready to leave when Shawn Michaels and a stunt guy we've never seen prior to this slide yeah! their car in. <laughs> Gabe. Played by uh, Craig Sugart. Yeah, he's, I, I had to check it out because uh, you were asking, yeah. he's, an, he's a stunt actor, over 40 credits, uh, including Ready to Rumble. Oh! oh. <laughs> the David Arquette vehicle. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> most prominently, he actually, he is Hulk's kayfabe stunt double in Three Ninjas 4. Oh, <laughs> man. High noon Whoa. at Mega Mountain. Nice. That's some See, royalty right there. He's a lot better than I thought he was. I was just calling him Unknown H, like one of those jobbers from SmackDown 2. <laughs> <laughs> I've got my eye on you. Doo -doo. The women run bouncily away, and Shelly ends up falling over a cliff edge, like a dum-dum. There's no reason for this. Yeah, it was weird. This couple of seconds didn't need to be on the show. <laughs> it, was, it was resolved within seconds. Yeah. Yeah. Shelly starts making a bunch of noises like that grape stomping lady in that viral video. You know, where she like falls over and like, ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Vinny and the stunt guy pull her up. Uh, the girls are taken down to the beach to meet Tony. CJ is sent to get the disc from her locker before her mom bites it. Uh, Shelly has a drink and she says, up yours, Vinny, but not Tony. She has this like preoccupation with Shawn Michaels for some reason. She keeps referring to him, but not the mobster that's telling him to kill her. <laughs> Stupid, sexy Michaels. <laughs> <laughs> oh, by the way, the champagne has the worst head in the history of television. <laughs> like, put a flake in that. It's an ice cream now. <laughs> So uh, at headquarters, P.I. Mitch Buchanan <laughs> notices that something is off with CJ. He's hanging out with the um, extra girls that were there in the previous locker scene with CJ and her mom. So, you know, they just filmed this in the same day, just pan the camera over and <laughs> get the rest of it done. So he decides to follow CJ because she's not even making up any excuses. She's just like, uh, whatever, bye. Vinny scopes the area, but he doesn't notice Mitch and Cody in the bushes. <laughs> That was his job. He had one job. Go see if anyone had followed her. <laughs> Shut nope. up, Rod. His binoculars. Yeah. He probably should have taken off his shades as well. Yeah. You know, hampered his vision. Yeah. The mobsters decide that they're going to kill off CJ and her mom after all. Mitch and Cody leap from the top of a big rock so everyone's yeah. stunt doubles can have at it. But how'd they get from those bushes to those rocks which were right in front of everyone? <laughs> <laughs> no one has peripheral vision in this episode. <laughs> I love this fight. Most of it, like, they have this wide shot of all of the, like, stunt doubles fighting. CJ's stunt double is just, like, just going at it, like, wailing on the uh, the mobster guy. Cody tackles Vinny. Uh, Mitch attempts to drown his guy. Pretty good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he sells a great punch from Gorgeous McCansom there. And there's a nice back bump from a double leg takedown. Nice. Mm. Oh, there was almost a swinging DDT in there, but they flump instead. And uh, at the end, the mob boss succumbs to a hair pull. A hair pull? <laughs> <laughs> I guess I believe with the mob guy, maybe he had heavies do his work for him most of the time. So hmm, he wasn't never. as good of a physical fighter. <laughs> but she battered Sean. Then she battered the mob boss. She's a beast. The She's show, taken yeah. on Brock Lesnar at Mania. <laughs> <laughs> so like the mob boss never got like physically involved with this until the CJ's mom issue. This is the one he yeah. had to get involved with personally. Look, he's, he's used to using guns and he's used to using Vinny. <laughs> That's why he has Vinny. He's not the physical, uh, he doesn't have the physical prowess. Mm. Up yours, Vinny. Anyway, uh, the mobsters are beaten into submission and just placed on a rock. <laughs> I guess they won. <laughs> Then we have a sad scene. Suddenly it's a sad episode. <laughs> 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 Gotta get my acting in here. Uh, CJ is saying goodbye to her mom. Hooray. I, I just CJ, so the daughter doesn't want the mom to live so far away. And she's like, oh, please live here. A big baby face move. But <laughs> in the script, uh, it says we absolutely don't want you back for more. And actually check the casting call. The only appearance in the series. Yep. <laughs> 242 episodes <laughs> and Baywatch nights. <laughs> Nothing. That's it. Her ma, never seen again. <laughs> Good. No. <laughs> this really highlights a uh, strength of Pamela Anderson's fake crying. <laughs> Every time they make her cry. And I felt like this was kind of like doing her a disservice because I think Pamela Anderson actually did pretty good in this episode overall. But then like they have to give her the crying scene and she's never good at it. And they keep doing this to her. What happened? That jerk try something? No. 
I think I got the cover girl job. Her mom mentioned something about like, when you were growing up, it was just you and me. And I know from what little they've given us of her backstory, she grew up with her grandpa in Vegas. That's how she learned how to gamble and got a gambling addiction. <laughs> and uh, she had a brother at some point. She mentions a brother in the Charlie's Angels episode. <laughs> oh, wow. Ah. Wait, do you mean a brother or a brother? <laughs> no, she's too old. No, he could. Hulk Hogan yeah. could be what? her brother. Yeah. Hulk Hogan could be her brother? <laughs> Why not? <laughs> I'm so young. <laughs> <laughs> There'd be another Hulk Hogan, like they don't acknowledge that they've met the actual Hulk Hogan. <laughs> oh, yes. Put the like acting wig on him. <laughs> <laughs> it's just him and like a backwards yeah. baseball cap. That'd be on par for Baywatch. <laughs> Brilliant. Hulkamania rules. We did it for the kids, for the youth center. What you gonna do? Woo! So that is the end of the episode. What happened after that? I was like, find out next week. <laughs> well, no, I meant like in the wrestling stuff. You want yeah. to talk about the wrestling stuff? How oh, right. That was it. We're Shawn just Michaels cutting a draw. On Raw. <laughs> I can tell you what happened next on Baywatch. No one acknowledged it. It didn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> so, Steve, what uh, would you make of this episode overall? Then? I thought this episode was significantly worse ah. than the WCW <laughs> episode. Like, it was a fun show, but it was definitely missing that level of silly wrestling bollocks that we're used to watching oh, sure. that we got out of the last one. No Taskmaster. Yeah, there's not like, you know, there's no like old diddler man, you know, at, you know, <laughs> there was no uh, like cancer B plot running throughout the episode because Very obviously mild. the wrestling is the, obviously the wrestling is, the is the A plot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. I had fun watching it. And it was fun to see Sean. It's fun to slag Sean over being jobbed out by this... Like, I don't want to call her old. She's not old, but, you know, she's a middle-aged lady getting the better of, you know, your world heavyweight champion. I'm glad I had a laugh talking about it, but uh, this was a bad episode of Baywatch. <laughs> I was just thinking, like, I wouldn't hire Sean after seeing him on Baywatch. I, it is hard <laughs> to act when he's got his hands together. His, his hands are literally tied together, you know? Well, they saw him on Pacific Blue, and they're like, get in here. Yeah. Does this mean I better start learning Japanese? Hi. And it's uh, Triple H is the diddler man. <laughs> oh, that's right, yeah. Defender of diddlers. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that superhero franchise has been taken yet. You know? So how'd I do? Perfect. How about me, boss? Perfect as usual. Uh, like Sean is one of the most charismatic personalities of all time and was not used anywhere near his strength. Like he played a stooge, booked just to be sent packing by the goodies time and time again. But like watching him, he can barely walk. <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> when you look at him, so, you know, fair enough. But I will say he is way better in Marine 6 with Becky and Miz. Yeah, he's very, very good in that show. Movie. Yeah, he's the best thing about it. Yeah, oh, yeah. easily. He's funny. Yeah. So, there we go. So it was Splice. And then get blocked by YouTube. <laughs> so, <laughs> was Bret Hart on Lonesome Dove better than this? Sorry. Oh, <laughs> he is better. Like, but he's booked as a baby face, a lovable right. rogue. You know, so we yeah. actually had something going on. So yeah, big time. Yeah. Yeah. I think Bret Hart as the genie was better. <laughs> <For sure. laughs> uh, Phelan, man, what do you think of this episode? I loved it. It's the best episode of Baywatch. It's probably one of the best episodes of college. <laughs> <laughs> it's unremarkable. Like I enjoyed the Bash at the Beach one much better because it had more wrestling bollocks in it and stuff. <laughs> so that makes it more fun from that perspective. Sean is very stiff, so he doesn't give you a whole lot. <laughs> it is just amusing, I guess, with his presence. But other than that, there's not a whole lot here. Yeah, uh, Shawn Michaels was playing it safe, I think, because he hadn't acted a lot. I think this was the first time he was acting not in a wrestling persona. So I think it was a very safe role for him. Uh, the episode itself, it's okay. I think like it's just not shit enough to be the most entertaining <laughs> uh, Baywatch episode because the best ones are often the ones that are the, the most crap. And this is competent, I would say, semi-competent. Um, it's the least of the wrestling episodes, I'll say that. Bash at the Beach is just a tough act to follow, and you just can't reach those heights. And it's no Pelican Man. Yeah, was, it's no Pelican is Man. Is he a better actor <laughs> than John Gonzalez? No. <laughs> um, well, no, I mean, 
<laughs> it's kind of comparable. They're pretty bad, but you can understand him better than, than Jorge Gonzalez. <laughs> Jorge Gonzalez, they decide, you know, this is a man that needs to have uh, long monologues. <laughs> Yeah, you guys should do that um, Giant Gonzalez episode with us sometime. Oh, I think, yes. I, uh, I think at the end of the last one, we were like, let's, uh, hey, what do you think of Shawn Michaels? It's like, well, bring us back on the show and we'll tell you. <laughs> 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 the unholy trinity of OSW shows. I would be absolutely down for oh that. Oh, my God. Fantastic. <laughs> awesome. Well, it's recorded, so there's evidence now. Yeah. <laughs> <I'll just laughs> there's no oh, backing yeah. out. It's going to be amazing. <laughs> You guys said you wanted to go over what happened uh, in wrestling after this, though, at Red Raw. This aired on Monday night, right? Yeah, yeah. Baywatch was on uh, Monday, November 4th, 96. So, Steve, what happened on Raw? Did you watch Raw? I did. Did you? Sorry, Raw. mate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I say, like, it must be kismet. Lawler, in the opening video package, says, guess who's coming to dinner? Yeah, and guess who's coming to dinner? Stone Cold Steve Austin. Stone Cold Steve Austin. There we go. Bam. It had to be a coincidence. He's not watching it. Uh, <laughs> this rot was the infamous Pillman House invasion. Oh. Yeah, this is literally one of the more famous angles of the entire 90s. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's also two weeks out from the Survivor Series where Sean will defend his WWF title against Psycho Sid. So Sean was champion since WrestleMania 12, the Iron Man. At the end of March. Six minutes in, over the phone, Austin cuts a promo. And, you know, he's getting his biblical Bible verse. Yeah, the book of Austin, 2517. <laughs> you hadn't settled on 316 yet. It's crazy, isn't it? Mental. <laughs> Feels like 25 is a little high also. <laughs> <laughs> After it's seven, it goes downhill, you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's the one it's all strike you down. Upon your ass with great vengeance and furious anger. Which um, The Undertaker used mm. as well. I mean, you know, it's quite an overused uh, line in, you know, TV shows and movies. Like, you know, is that the Pulp Fiction yeah. one as well? Yeah. Oh, man, this was back when Raw was one hour. So it's 47 minutes. Get in. <laughs> Steve, do you like uh, Goldust versus The Stalker? Barry Windham. I did not. But <laughs> 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 it, was, it was absolute shade. But I will say Barry Windham looked hilarious. He had his big mighty tash um yeah 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 <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah double dq five and a half minutes <laughs> yeah total nothing match which is literally just there to have austin call in and cut a promo mm. wwf big bang boom <laughs> recap segment which is named a live tour in 96 like uh, nova scotia milwaukee uh, and then bam bam terry gordy in his halloween cape and mask <laughs> eh? nice. doing that for you i mean you know uh, it's Better than Baywatch, <laughs> but not by much. I was thinking like Undertaker got his Phantom of the Opera mask, Mankind had his mask, and Terry Gordy, $8 at a bargain bin Halloween store with a cape and cow. Oh. <laughs> he looked like something out of WBW. Yeah. Which is our Bouncy Castle Federation. Um, oh. <laughs> let's just leave it at that. Um, Pillman is at home and he's convalescing from ankle surgery. So he had a car accident in April 96, which greatly limited his in-ring ability and they're working it into a TV angle. Austin storms Pillman's gaff. So Pillman's mates confront him and when the guy, he has a raggedy shirt and it falls apart immediately <laughs> as Austin touches it. It just turns the dust. <laughs> it just goes... <laughs> <laughs> Um, oh, then we got a uh, Bob Backlund. He's got the Sultan versus Alex the Pug Porto. The Pug. That's a gimmick that'll get a person over. Foreigner Savage Sultan uh, Rikishi here is being managed by Backlund, so he has wrestling offense. Ankle sweeps, suplex, headlocks, and camel clutch tap out in two minutes. Yeah, nothing match. That was all of the moves, but. Yeah. Ooh, HBK, he is on Raw. He has a face-to-face -face interview with his opponent at the Survivor Series, Psycho Sid. I was, I was like, come on, come on, say it. Say what you want, say the word, get it in, you know, put some <laughs> kind of quote in there. Doesn't say a word, sandbags it completely. <sighs> oh, man. Saving Grace, though, he has a cow ice cream design, sequin, shiny, red and black and white tights. And a denim jacket. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, Mark Merrow with Sable versus Razor with Dizel. Oh. oh my god, fake Razor and fake Diesel. Yeah. Oh, my oh my god. Oh my god. Yeah, the state of the two of them. 
this so this is when um the outsiders went to wcw and made a big hoopla there and then jr went to vince and hey we still own the ip we should do something with this and he's like well okay well you put it over then and he's like well i will then won't i and then you get this <laughs> train wreck with two fake wrestlers <laughs> um, uh, ooh, Kerwin Selfies calls in to update Vince on the Pillman angle it was very very weird to hear him on a show mm, that is the WWF director and he's the guy you should shout at for WWE's camera cuts today he's still got oh, a job like the shaky camera yeah shaky cam yeah. quick cuts uh, the like cameraman actually chasing the action with the camera it's all oh, okay. you know it's all him and done right mm. Mm. So the big spot in the Pillman angle. Oh, uh, he whips out a fucking gun. Mm. So Austin is uh, broken into his gaff and he's like, well, I'm going to protect myself. Here we go. Pillman 911. Awesome. <laughs> and then they cut uh, static for some reason. And uh, Kerwin Selfie says, oh, the power was cut at the Pillman house and there's been no more activity. So JR just gets on Vince's case and he just says, oh, this is a publicity stunt for the Pillman shooting and in shoot, let's get ahead of the complaints by voicing them on TV already. <laughs> and it sounds like Vince is actually angry about this. Jer has given him shit for airing it on TV and saying it's a cheap publicity stunt because he badgers him for whatever, 40 seconds. And he's just like, don't get smart. <laughs> and that's it. This is no this is time for don't you give me that to get into it. Don't get smart. Don't get wise. Jerry says Vince is the head muckety muck and take responsibility for it. And so Vince says, oh, I'm, I'm really sorry about this. I apologize. Now let's show it again. <laughs> 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 right. Amazing. And, like, and plus Pillman drops a big dirty F-bomb live on Raw. Mm. Yeah. Holy shit. Call the police! Call the police! All right. That must have gotten them into so much trouble. Plus the gun and the uh, looming violence and shooting and threat. Like As famous as this segment is, I would have loved to have been backstage as it happened. And, you know, like people are covering it and, and just to see, you know, Vince. If Vince loves it, if he's going, I love the coverage. It's amazing. <laughs> or, <laughs> or if he's furious at how wrestling is being shown on <laughs> national TV. Uh, it would have been an amazing I'm sure he's loving thing. it. Yeah, it Like, 96, was. they're in the doldrums, you know? Yeah. Uh, like, 97 is the only year they lost money, and it's because 96 was so bad, even though they tried to turn it around in 97, so... But yeah, an amazing angle, and it's still, yeah, one of the most famous of all time. No mention of Baywatch, though. <laughs> but they have enough time to mention Sean's appearance on Regis and Kathy Lee. You're a zebra, there's no doubt about it. I bet they were... <laughs> Baywatch was probably kind of happy about that, considering what that was going on. Yeah. If they had followed that up and just been like, well, you can see HBK on Baywatch. <laughs> <laughs> Check him out. It's like, and if you thought this show was good, and if you're excited for Shawn Michaels versus Psycho Sid, check out Shelly Batter, our world champion, on, on a beach somewhere. <laughs> but Steve, what bar is Guess Who's Coming to Dinner, Baywatch? <laughs> well, Jay, Allison, and Phelan, Guess Who's Coming to Dinner, Baywatch is many bars. Mm. Yeah. Woo! Oh, meme, yeah. We have bars for Shawn Michaels, <laughs> and we have multiple bars for CJ's mom. The main event. Has got it going on. <laughs> <laughs> Let's kick off with Shawn Michaels uh, wearing his gorgeous undercover beach wear. Uh, he's wearing a pair of uh, what seems to be purple and blue with reddish color. He is a bubblegum popsicle. Ice pop. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. It's, it's got that like cow <laughs> kind of distribution, like yeah, his it jocks. Does, it's it? perfect. Yeah, that would fit what he's wearing around the time. <laughs> so next up we have CJ's mom. Got it going, going on. on. The scene uh, where uh, herself and CJ go to see Tony at the Ritz Carlton. She's wearing a lovely little white top with a cream blazer over it. Mm. So she is none other than a Magnum White Ice Cream Bar. Oh, man! <laughs> okay, Those are this. delicious. By the way, they, they're <laughs> so good. Next up, we have CJ's mom from when she's <laughs> relaxing on the beach. 
wearing a lovely purple and red blouse and skirt. So she is, and by the way, I absolutely hate these sweets, <laughs> uh, a packet of Parma violets. What? Oh, what the hell is that? Oh, oh you, those, you guys don't Those are don't like have rockets? These. So these are like chalky sweets and they are violet flavor. So they're the flavor of flowers in your mouth. Ew. Oh, Th this ew. is perfect like granny the, food. Like the lavender kind of flavor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Ew. Ew. <laughs> that sounds disgusting. That's worse than normal rockets. <laughs> this is very fitting for CJ's mom. <laughs> yeah. This is something she'd keep in her pocket. <laughs> yeah. And we've got one last one from at the end of the show, Shelly CJ's mom. The uh, sad moment where she's <laughs> going away. Uh, so she's wearing a yellow blazer with a kind of navy blue skirt. So she is a flake, a Cadbury <laughs> flake bar. Delicious. Yeah. Incredible. That's, yeah. that's much better than flower candies. <laughs> <laughs> so much better than flower candies. Um, Steve, will you just move the keyboard up and you can see the... Yeah? Oh my god, sorry! It's not the last do, 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 one! Do, 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 do. What? Oh. Brucey e. bonus! <laughs> Whopper! <Whoa. laughs> so we've saved the best for last. Of course, it's CJ's mom again. This is from the beginning of the episode where she drops into CJ's apartment unannounced, the fucking cheek of her. But she's wearing a yellow and brown uh, blazer and blouse duo. It's kind of green and brown. Yeah. Kind of camo-ish. Yeah, kind of green. Yeah, kind of kind of like a camo color. Uh, I don't know. Did I say yellow? Because I didn't mean to. Um, Maybe so if the, the banana went moldy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just give it a week. So she is none other than one of the... Uh, i definitely going to guess that you guys don't have them over there. Uh, I think these are Irish, actually. They're quite iconic. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, very, very popular when we were kids because they were really cheap. So if you got a couple of quid, you could go down to the shop and buy 10 of them. <laughs> uh, she is an animal bar. <laughs> I've never heard of this. Is this the one the junkies use to foil for us? <laughs> it actually would have been <laughs> this and a Kit Kat. But if it's like just cheap chocolate that you get like 10 of them, I bet it's not very good. <laughs> well, it's Nestle. It should be a little okay. <laughs> Do you want to tell them about the animal bar? Uh, it's literally just a very thin, plain chocolate bar. And mm. it's got, you know, like different animal pictures printed on it. So there were like different covers, you know, to be one with like a monkey, to be one, with, you know, like a lion, a, a giraffe, rhino, yeah. giraffe. Yeah, great. Yeah. Delicious. Delicious. Amazing. Her <laughs> face is pretty much matching the monkey on the wrapper. <laughs> <laughs> CJ, mom, you animal. Yeah. Yeah. Fucking <laughs> animal, animal Shelly. <laughs> Wonderful, Steve. Well done, sir. So, yes, yeah, so that brings to a close our, uh, our our game of what bar is CJ's mom and oh, Sean. man. But, you know, Me. he's yeah. a geek in this show. <laughs> yeah. This is amazing. I was so pumped for what bar. Like, <laughs> <laughs> that's my favorite segment that you guys do. <laughs> I love it. OOC fucking hates it. <laughs> he gets so salty every time we play this game. But it's so much fun. That's what makes it better, Steve. Yeah, just totally. just power through. <laughs> Spike. Yeah. I appreciate I appreciated having to get a little creative for this one too. Not the wildest wrestling outfit, so <laughs> awesome. Glad you enjoyed it. All right, well, uh, I think that wraps up our talk about guess who's coming to dinner. Unless you guys any had anything else written down or anything else you wanted to talk about in the the episode or wrestling related or anything. Do you have anything on shock on Saturday night? <laughs> <laughs> We will not be discussing Shotgun. <laughs> not on my show. <laughs> not the precursor well, to Jacked and Metal. <laughs> God, Jacked and Metal. I saw one episode of Shotgun. What a pointless <laughs> fucking thing. <laughs> Thank you so much, guys, for joining us. This has been amazing. Uh, it was our pleasure. Thank you so much. Uh, was, oh, yeah, it was a really good crack. Man, if, if we can do one thing for us, it would be to check out our appearance on Baywatching, just YouTube, OSW Baywatch, which is on Alton channel right here. Or you can enjoy Phelan's. Oh, I actually really liked your knockoff chocolate video. You should go watch that. <laughs> if you're pumped for what bar, you enjoy, you'll enjoy that video. Link's in the description. Can I say that? <laughs> sure, I'll put them in the description. Right. When there I go, go. <laughs> listen back to this, I'll be like, oh, yeah, I guess Here I'm he is, <laughs> hot dogging and grandstanding again. I tried my best not to take over. I'm going oh, to Oh, thanks, good. man. 
appreciate the plugs. <laughs> no, where can people fun. find your stuff? What do we do, Steve? We talk mostly bollocks about professional wrestling from yesteryear. We cover wrestling pay-per-views, TV shows, and ever so often we'll cover, you know, like a movie or video games. Search for OSW Review on YouTube or go to oswreview.com. Yeah, don't worry about the Oregon Scout Girls West. Bad OSW, that's not us. Or the <laughs> Office of Sewage Waste, that's not us. <laughs> <laughs> Or there's a Polsky one as well. It's like, a figure schlugly wengly. That could be us. That could we, maybe, we maybe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it's a goodbye from V1. Take a boo. And Alison. Bye. <laughs> so see, see, if I get the second, I'll get the third and fourth. <laughs> <laughs> and Phelan. And me. And myself, Jay Hunter, the two and a half time Golden Nugget Award winner. And remember... Oh, wait, shit. Can we do a winner is you together? We can. And remember... <laughs> A winner is you. <laughs> <laughs>